Hang on, Joe. We're coming back right now. Sorry about that. We're coming back on the record. Just pick up this conversation. Our man Joe Davidson of the Sacramento Bee with us. Uh, kind of annoying, kind enough to join us as he does very regularly here on on Dilo and KC. And man, we've got a lot to discuss. Joe D, uh, lots of high school stuff to talk about. I want to get there, but can we talk about this Sac State, Pac mm. 12, Mount West, this mm. potential massive, massive change uh, that could be coming uh, the way of the Sac State Hornets? Yeah, it's good to join you guys uh, as always. And um, there are some moving parts over at Sacramento State, and I think it's exciting. I appreciate and applaud the ambition, uh, but then there's this dose of reality. Um, so what what's going on is the Pac-12, as we all knew, all know, um, splintered and fell apart because all the other teams, except for Oregon State and Washington State, bolted for other conferences because money talks and TV revenue saves programs and, and, and visibility and all that. Um, and so now the PAC 12 has two teams, Oregon state, Washington state needs to have eight members to be an NCAA conference. And so last week it was uh, released by the, by, by the PAC 12 that uh, the following schools were going to join the PAC 12 starting in the fall of 2026 Boise state, Fresno State, San Diego State, Colorado State. So it's all these state, 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 state. So what about Sacramento State? Um, if Sacramento State were to join this conference, it would suddenly and immediately be the largest media market um, with all those schools we just mentioned in Oregon State and Washington State. But where's the money going to come from? And so there's a uh, there's a movement, uh, a local movement with local elected officials um, called the SAC-12 playing off the words of the Pac-12, and they've made it known that they want to get Sacramento State into the Pac-12 starting in 2026. Uh, and then today, that firm released more, you know, saying that they've secured some $50 million in that, um, name, image, and likeness commitment for the first 10 years in the Pac-12. Um, there's been a sec- funding secure to ensure that the football stadium gets upgrades, that'll be needed. The basketball arena most certainly needs an upgrade. It's the worst d- basketball facility in all of Division One college athletics. And then also trying to ensure that there's going to be at least 15,000 people at the remaining Sac State football games. I'd like to see it. My point being, if this city wants to back Sacramento State in athletics in a move, then they need to start coming out and selling out. And We've talked about this before. I can understand why there's great appeal to Sac State football, local coaches, local players, FCS, highly ranked, three-time Big Sky champion since 2019, um, all kinds of good things. But home games against Nichols last week and Eastern Washington coming up, Weber State coming up, Portland State coming up, there's not a lot of rank name recognition to kind of sell out. I think for the general fan, but we see the same thing down at Cal and Stanford, San Jose State. They don't sell out. They only come close. So I don't know if college football is a hard sell in Northern California. Sac State's, you know, does just fine in the big sky. So we'll see. I think it's ambition. I I, I think it's a a, a great idea. The Sac State people are not talking about it. Uh, Not yet. Um, They put out a general statement. Um, Somebody tried to ask the Sac State football coaches after the Nichols opener the other night, one by the Hornets um, and Brian Berger, the a public information officer and part of the athletic department for years. So, you know, we're not talking about that here. Um, I can understand that at some point I'm going to get people to talk to see if they want to do it. Obviously they're all on the same page. They want, they want ambition and all that. So can it work? I think it, I think it can, but certainly the PAC 12 is going to look around too. Um, not going to just look at Sac State could be Hawaii, could be San Jose state could be all kinds of things, or maybe Sac state goes into a different conference. Maybe it joins, um, fills the void of Fresno state, San Diego state and, uh, Boise State. Yeah, uh, a number of different things here, Joe. Man, that's, that's great information. I, m- me personally, I've said that I love them going after trying to get into the uh, Pac-12 and make sure they're ready to get into the Pac-12, even if it is a little bit of a long shot for that, because it's one of those things where if you shoot for the, what they say, you shoot for the stars, because if you miss and fall in the clouds, you you know you you still in somewhere. I think the clouds in this situation will be the Mountain West Conference, and uh, I think if they're really pushing um, to be an FBS school and, and to get into the, that level, they I think they could get to a mid-major level. Pac-12 is a little ambitious. I don't know if they can necessarily get there, 
but I think they can get into the Mac, uh, excuse me, the Mountain West and take the place of those four schools that you talked about. Um, the one thing that I, I want to know, and you've you've mm-hmm. seen every argument and push, you know, to upgrade Sac State um, over the years. A lot of the times, it's always been they don't have the donor money, they don't have the um, the booster money to be able to do something like this. It feels like I don't know. That's why I'm asking you: Is this the first time it's gone outside of that and and potentially been a citywide effort? To, to help Sac State? There's been what Sacramento State used to have what was called the Stinger Foundation, led by alums. Um, and that was in the 1980s and 1990s, trying to get raise interest, raise funds. Sacramento State became a scholarship football program in 1985 or so, some 40 years ago. There was a push to help that happen. There's been a push to save football at Sac State and UC Davis. They were, they were both on the chopping block. Uh, some 30 years ago, people forget. Um, we, we lost a lot of college football teams across the state. Um, but this is the first time I've seen uh, local government officials uh, involved in this. And, um, and you know, I've been to Fresno State football stadium. I've been to Boise State stadium. I've been to University of uh, Oregon football stadium. And they're just stunning facilities and fortresses and a lot of it's from deep pocketed donors sacramento state has tried to reach out for for an alum who's got money to burn you see a, a nice facilities over uc davis and you know how can i have smaller cities ha- have this happen? well where are the deep pocketed donors the phone lines are open at sacramento state if somebody wants to step forward and and like we touched on earlier guys you got to have a basketball arena that's better than what's there now and got to upgrade the football stadium um, to, to even be in the argument. And that's going to be stuff that's got to be done quickly. Um, you know, and and, and so it, it's Sac State's not going to lose a conference if it doesn't join the Pac-12 or maybe the Mountain West. But um, I think I think Sac State's going to be ready in a lot of sports. I think football could make a nice transition from FCS to FBS. Baseball's already proven under Coach Randy Christensen that it could win conference championships and be an NCAA. Um Women's basketball a couple of years ago won the Big Sky Tournament and played in the NCAA for the first time. Gymnastics, women's volleyball, track and field men and women um, have softball have all done well. So um, Sacramento State's looking to get some kind of conference at some point because at current, guys, Sacramento State's 21 athletic programs play in three or four different conferences. And so it's kind of a mismatch. And so um, – you know, it's, it's exciting to see for Sacramento State people that, that there's discussion. There's been a lot of years where there hasn't been much discussion at all. Yeah. Joe, am I am I reading this wrong? You don't sound too sure about this idea. Well, it's it's a fair take, uh, Damian. I'm, um, I just think if they could get those facilities going, then they have a shot. Uh, but I kind of agree with Kenny that uh, Mountain West might be more feasible. Um, there's discussion, you know, well, what about have, having Stanford and Cal come out of the ACC and join the reconfigured Pac-12? I'm not so sure Stanford alums want to be in a collection with a bunch of state schools. You know, there's some, maybe there's some snobbiness to that, but, um, um, you know, we'll see. But I think it's great that Sac State is, is the, the, this, this uh, outside of the campus firm is, is, is pushing on this and reaching out to the media and getting getting people to talk about it. So let's see the fans start showing up. Um, Sac State football's on the road this week. And then, uh, um, and then on the 28th at Northern Arizona, um, Arizona, and then they have one, two, three of the next four at home come out and see what they can do. Um, you know, I don't want to get on here and say, Oh, this is going to happen. It's a great thing. You know, let's go, let's go. Um, there's just so many things that have to happen. San Diego state doesn't have to upgrade its football stadium or basketball arena as an addition to the Pac-12, neither does Fresno State, neither does Boise State, neither does Colorado State. So those teams, those schools are more ready to join the Pac-12 than Sac State is. Absolutely. Um, a couple other things I've been, I've been, you know, reading up on this and reading your article and, 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 and others as well about this. You, the, the interesting thing that they do have going for them, if they can get the other things going, is that media market thing where they would instantly be the biggest media market in a, in a conference that's trying to reestablish themselves. They're going to need that. Like being, having Boise state in there is, is 
good, but that's not going to get you the the media coverage necessarily that you need. So that's an issue. One one thing against that for um, Sac State is I heard the Pac-12, and this actually makes sense. Like we always get frustrated with the ACC having stat Stanford and Cal and all this other stuff. But when it's put to me this way and just understanding the dynamics of, of, of college football, that makes sense. They said the Pac-12 may look for a Tulane or a Memphis to join. And the, the thought is they need or they want a Pac-12 game in every time slot. So you yeah, really Exactly two, right. Could be in Texas and other states. Yeah, you get one. You get the late games. And that actually makes sense. Like that's mm-hmm. that's the way college football is now. That's the way you got to play. Absolutely, you go across to the East Coast or maybe in the South and make sure you have a game in that 9 a.m. time slot. And that would be where they, like Sac State, kind of wouldn't fit because they're not just looking at the West Coast. They're trying to go all all across the country, and it makes sense. I agree. And, and you know, the Pac-12 and its new commissioner, and they're based in the, in the Bay Area, um, is going to look – they're going to have all kinds of schools looking. Um, we know Sacramento State's interested because they have a firm that's reached out to say that, but this could be happening across the country. Um, and I don't know, you know, Sac State, so the Pac-12 only needs to get to eight teams minimum. They could add three, four, five, six more. Mm-hmm. You know, how many, you know, with the Big Ten and the, some of these conferences that have 10 teams, but there's actually 18 teams. So uh, it's just, it's just, you know, if you think about Sac State really has come to power in football in 2019, and, and, you know, Andy Thompson was hired as a defensive coordinator, Troy Taylor, the head coach. And now Troy's down at Stanford. Andy's the, the head coach now. So football can, I think football can make that transition. Basketball can, can do better things. We've all seen the nest. It's a nice cozy little gym at Sacramento state, uh, but it, it needs to be a significant upgrade. And what happens when you get better facilities, you have recruits who might be more inclined to say, geez, this looks really nice. Um, and, and they'll go. Uh, President Luke Wood, very spirited leader for Sacramento State, um, showed me the the gym last year with with their plans uh, to to get a new arena on campus or inside one of the buildings. And and I ribbed him a little bit, and I said, "Hey, you know, but it looks good with this fresh new green paint." And he goes, "You can't put lipstick on a pig." And so uh, I know he's ambitious about it, and um, you know, it'll be real curious to see what happens a year from now. You know, where are we on these things? And uh, if nothing does happen, then Sac State is it's fine in the in the in the, the Big Sky Football Conference certainly. But um, there's not big television revenue there, and I think Sacramento State's probably the largest media market in that for sure in that conference. Uh, Davis is part of that. UC Davis is as well. And uh, meanwhile, we're not sure what UC Davis wants to do. Um, um, Rocco DeLuca, the athletic director for the Aggies, had a. Uh, I'm not sure it's a meme, but he had a, an image on his social media last week without any comments after the Pac-12 announced additions. And he had a, a, an image on his social media that he posted of UC Davis's football stadium suddenly bigger and expanded. And so maybe he's saying, yeah, we'd like to be. Interested. I think they're going to certainly listen to that call if it comes that way. And real, real quick, I'm glad you brought up uh, President Luke Wood because that's another factor in this. Once again, you would know better than I would, but it feels like he's the first school president in in my lifetime at Sac State that looks at athletics as a priority and moving forward with athletics as a as a you know a priority. Or he, I, I know um, before they they had that too, but now he's taken over and he's trying to elevate that a little bit. And he does a lot of great things, a lot of great things outside of athletics. But it it almost feels like he looks at this as this could be my legacy, you know, being able to elevate this school um, to another level with the athletics. Oh, I agree. And Luke Wood is an alum of the school. He's a younger president. Um, he's certainly on the fast track. I think Sac State's going to have to work hard to keep this guy. I, I think there's going to be some schools that are going to look at this guy's energy and his spirit and his ability to connect students and be out in the public. Um, you know, he, he's going to be a, a fine addition somewhere else. But like you said, um, you know, Casey, maybe there, there's something to build here. Same with the athletic director, Mark Orr. Um, he's a native son. He went to Christian Brothers High of Sacramento and and he's been the athletic director for the last few years. And um, so they're, they're, they're wired to be ambitious and and there's no president in um, 
you know, in this state, maybe in all of college athletics for any university, really, rather, that, that boxes. Luke Wood, President Wood, gets out there and boxes. And so uh, uh, I think that's that kind of speaks of, of his, his, his spirit for that school. You ready to switch? Yeah. Because we got a one versus two. We do. My boys, my boys got a we one do. versus two this weekend. Whoa. Folsom and Rockland, Joe D. Great high school football season so far. We're one month in. Our number one team in Sacramento B is the Folsom Bulldogs since forever, pretty much every week since 2012, except for a few here and there. So they've been a juggernaut. We've talked about them. They have a loss earlier this season to Sarah of San Mateo on a last second field goal. I think it helped humble the Folsom Bulldogs. They're kids, they're excitable. Sometimes the coaches feel like they got to reel them in, and sometimes you got to get knocked down to get back up. And uh, you know, the Rockland Thunder come in unbeaten, superbly coached, strong in the, in the trenches. They have a 6'6", 325 pound tackle named Garrison Blank. Uh, it fills a door frame. He's going to UCLA. And Ryder Lyons, of the quarterback star for Folsom, is as fine of a quarterback as I've ever seen around here. Tremendous footwork, its capability. Don't want to overshoot things, but I think this guy's going to be an NFL player. He's only a junior now in high school. That's going to be a terrific game. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. And, uh, you know, Folsom is, is probably favored at home, more experience, uh, but but uh, both defending section champions. But don't be surprised if Rockland goes in there and wins. Um, that's a oh, that's a program that beat him in 2021. <laughs> that's good. I love I love the one versus two matchups, man. And um, Rockland's going to be ready to play. Rockland's going to be ready to play. I'm I'm confident in that. When you talked about the big game that's going down, I, I thought – you were talking about Kennedy versus McClatchy because no, well, you know, let's, let's talk about that. That the Sacramento City why. Unified School District programs <laughs> there. There was um these schools need each other. They've been rivals since Kennedy High opened in Green Haven, I think, in 1965, 66, 67 through there. So they've been rivals. Uh, there's been a couple of years. I think the series didn't play. They were worried about people getting out of control. Not not usually the f- uh, players, but sometimes the outside influences. Um, but these are two academic powerhouse schools that need better football fortunes and they need more players and more interest. And, um, but that'll be a good game. There'll be alumni going out there and apparently Kenny might be out there signing out autographs. Maybe not. I might pull up. It's it's at Hughes stadium. You know, that's, that's, that's home right there. So I might have nobody plays in a better venue than Hughes stadium. Well, speaking of though, in all seriousness, uh, I, I always marvel at, um, how cool the Holy Bowl is. And it's, it's really cool because uh, I think, like you said, they're getting like 10, 12,000 in, in Hughes Stadium for that game. And it's it's not just Jesuit and Christian Brothers alumni. Like over the years, I've seen kids from different schools like, oh man, I'm going to the Holy Bowl. Like they go to Franklin High School. And I'm going to the Holy Bowl. Like the, the city really kind of turns out for that game on a Saturday night. Um, the way they do, and they, they had another edition this past week. I thought it was pretty cool. They sure did. And, and Jesuit and Christian Brothers, they started that series in 1969. Uh, they play it on Saturdays so they could get more people out there. They've had crowds up to 18,000 out there. Um, that's just incredible. Um, but here's what's weird about this series, or just remarkable, is it took years to get that series going. Jesuit opened in 1963. Christian Brothers been around since the turn of the century, and the last one. Um, and they uh the administrators for both schools in the mid 60s thought no a football rivalry is going to be too intense and it'll take away the concentration that they need to be good students are you kidding a good football rivalry is a great thing nobody talks like that now but back then you know they, it took a while to get it going we, they didn't want it to get out of control and it's, it reminds me of, of de la salle the football superpower down there in contra costa county they they that school opened in the um the 60s late mid 60s and it took like eight years to get football going because they worried at that school district that football would be taken too seriously and then it became a great identifier for that campus nobody nobody says that now I mean, you can imagine opening a new high school and saying yeah maybe football is just not going to be you know people are going to take it too serious. they take it serious it means something you see the rooting sections and the fans and all that so um you know that's good to see yeah and it comes still a top squad yes uh intercom's only loss was by a touchdown a couple weeks ago <laughs> excuse me to uh, grant uh, playing friday at um christian brothers 
Ricky Cole is a, is a perfect example of a high school player who does everything right. He's a quarterback. He's a fine student, makes all the throws. He's, he's, he's worth watching. He's worth following. And Luke Alexander is another one um, at Grant. They do all these great things. Well, where's the recruiting interest? They can't all get offers. There are tens of thousands of high school kids in America trying to get hundreds of scholarships, which is why the junior college rosters are so stacked or the small colleges or the division two. And I always say, we talked about this before guys go where it fits. Don't go where your friends want you to go. You go where it fits. It's like, it's like applying for a job. And, uh, and if that's the Juco route or small college or something, go for it. Everybody wants to play at Cal and, Sac State or Michigan or something, but the reality shows that that's not reality. Yeah. Well, appreciate you, Joe. Be the man. Great stuff He's as the always. Man. Yeah, J- when appreciate Joe it. Was and when when I, Joe is proudly wear the fact I'm going to Sac State football practice today, and I will be wearing my green on the campus oh, that champions green. Tell Coach Tom. You on the back? Is there here. a dollar sign on the back of this? No, no, Joe. There's not a <laughs> Look, you guys are looking. Said, Did Joe, he, he Joe, Joe, there? <laughs> Joe, Coach Thompson, I need field access for the next game. Man. I need to be down there on the field. Man. We'll you take know, care of you. We'll take game. care of you. And you know how you can get somebody's attention? Go streaking across the middle. There's Kenny Carroll. <laughs> that's that's, that's going to go <laughs> viral. You're carrying me out like Cuba Gooding. I don't want that. <laughs> then your mother would leave you a text. We need to talk. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're going to get in trouble just for saying that. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate you, Joe. Thanks, guys. Be well. That's our man, Joe Davidson, right there. The man uh, at the Sacramento Bee. Some good games this weekend in high school. Yeah, man.